Welcome to lesson four of enhanced electric power quality and reliability. In this lesson we're going to discuss SCADA concepts. So this is our old familiar diagram here and uh, I'm going to do a little review, talk about what we've already discussed in the previous lessons and, and how it uh, relates to what we're going to talk to today. Uh, so this is our power grid and of course uh, We've got our generating assets up here um, that we'd like to monitor and they feed power into the grid that goes into our users, uh, our residential customers, our industrial power customers, things like that. And then we've also got our renewable generation that feeds into the grid as well. Um, in our first lesson, we, we talked about all the smart grid fundamentals and the the fact that the electric grid has evolved over time, become more complex, and at the same time we're a lot more dependent on it. And so uh, we've developed this smart grid concept where we're uh, going out and instrumenting our grid and uh, using that information to better operate the grid and, and to troubleshoot our problems and to uh, learn how to do new things with it. And in our second lesson we talked about telemetry and telemetry specifically about how uh, what telemetry is which is measuring all these uh, all these uh, pieces of information that we need to know um, and reporting them back to a central location and so in telemetry we talked about the concept of data tags so if I were to say I uh, want to monitor the voltage on uh, on this transmission line I would I would you know create a tag for that uh, for that voltage and that tag would have certain metadata associated with it like a minimum and a maximum and and engineering units and things like that and then in the the lesson after that we talked about instrumentation so we talked specifically about how how a potential transformer works and what it looks like and how computer systems can measure physical physical things that are happening in the world and produce a digital representation of that. So uh, it, there's where we are right now. We've discussed telemetry and instrumentation. Now we're going to discuss the computer systems that actually uh, carry those measurements back to a, a control room or SCADA systems. So uh, if you're operating an electric grid, you typically have some sort of a control room or a control center that's going to look something like this. Um, and here's where the computer's uh, trying to uh, represent everything that's going on in your grid so that you can uh, operate it and maintain it and fix problems. Uh, you can see the huge computer screens there. And uh, at this point, you should understand that all the information that's being shown on those screens are, are tags. Um, and that each one of those tags has a is uh, is showing a specific uh, data point. Um, you should also understand how the uh, the process of uh, getting that number into a computer happens through the analog to digital conversion process. Um, so here's a, a simple SCADA diagram. Um, up here at the top, we, these are the workstations and computer systems that are in the control room or or in some sort of central monitoring location like I showed you in the in the previous picture and uh, so that that all that computer equipment sits on top of some sort of a communication network that then has devices that are out in the field making those measurements and so these devices are either uh, PLC's programmable logic controllers or RTU's remote telemetry units uh, this is a nice picture here of a, of a SCADA RTU um, so this is something you might find if you were to go out to a, like an electric substation or anywhere out in in the field that uh, you know where you were trying to make measurements and do things. Um, you put the computer systems in these little uh, um, weatherproof enclosures and uh, close them up, and you have power run into them and a communications line run into them, and they sit out there and do their thing. So that's a SCADA RTU. Um, RTU, uh, I've seen remote terminal unit or remote telemetry unit. Um, I like the acronym remote telemetry unit because, uh, you know, obviously that's what it's doing is taking measurements and reporting data back. In the heart of, of all this is the programmable logic controller. 
Um, and a PLC is a uh, it's a small industrialized computer that um, is made specifically to measure and control real world processes. So uh, let me mark this up a little bit and get my pen ready. So a PLC right here, as you would see, um, right here is a CPU. Uh, this little card right there. Um, these cards all plug in. If you look right here, there's a back plane. Okay, and so typically you put this back plane on the uh, you put this back plane on the wall and uh, or in your cabinet. And uh, actually, um, I've made a mistake here. This isn't the CPU. This is the power supply. Okay. So usually these things run off a of 24 volts DC, and so you have a power supply in here. Uh, then you have the CPU, and then you have cards. Okay, and these are typically called I/O cards, input/output cards, and these are the things that are actually wired into the instruments uh, and the field devices. Um, and the, you might also have some sort of a communications card in there um, to talk to devices as well. Um, so we talked about the analog to digital conversion process and, and we talked about current loops, right? So uh, the I.O. cards all are, you know, there's typically multiple types of I.O. cards that are available for a PLC. Um, you'll have analog input and output cards uh, and digital input and output cards. So a digital signal would be like a digital input card, which you would do is you would wire, say, a, a push button switch to it, um, or maybe like a breaker closure or something like that. And so you could sense whether that button was being pushed or whether that breaker was closed, and that would be a digital input, right? Remember, our digital inputs are on or off. Um, a digital output would enable you to close a switch. So maybe there's a motor out there or a breaker that you want to close, and so you would close the switch, and that would cause the action to happen out in the field. And then our analog inputs would be things like, you know, maybe a 0 to 12 volt DC input or a 4 to 20 milliamp um, input. And that would allow us to take readings from the field. And then sometimes you'll also have analog outputs. So you might have a valve or something that, that was variable that you could close it, you know, a quarter way or a half way or, you know, anywhere in between. And so you would have an analog output that would tell that valve how much to close. Um, if you have a communications card in here, and we'll, we'll talk about that actually a lot more in our next lesson, but uh, if you have a communications card in here, maybe you've got things like smart meters or some sort of smart device where the I.O., the, you know, the actual A to D conversion is happening in the device, and then it's got some sort of a digital uh, communications bus that can connect to the PLC. But if I go back to my uh, original diagram here, oh, let me talk about one more thing while I'm here. Okay, so here's the PLC in the cabinet. And then these down here are um, called terminal blocks or TBs. And so typically what will happen is you put your TBs in here and you'll, you'll wire from the TB up into the PLC, make it all nice and neat. And then out down on the bottom of the, PL, of the TBs, uh, you'll have all your wiring going to your instruments and your devices out in the field. Um, and then this right here is called Panduit. And uh, it's actually kind of neat, but it's just to kind of hide the wires and make it all look neat so that you don't just have a jumble of wires when you open up a cabinet. Um, keeps you from snagging the wires and stuff when you're working in there. Makes, makes the, you know, not only makes it look nicer, but it's functional. So uh, these Panduit, uh, this Panduit stuff, the uh, cover just pops off right here, and then you can see all the wires in there. And then on the side, it's got these little fingers so you can feed the wires out through it. But... Anyway, so the, the programmable logic controller here is, is, is kind of the heart of the, the system. They're little industrial computers. Um, they sit inside the, the SCADA RTU cabinets, um, you know, right here. So uh, these are the PLCs inside the SCADA RTU cabinet. And then, of course, those RTUs are out in the field. So you can see in this diagram it's got PLC and it's got RTU. And they a lot of kind of the same thing. So PLC programming, um, these PLCs have to be programmed to do things. And uh, there's actually an international standard. It's, it's called uh, IEC 61131. And um, 
it basically defines the the possible programming languages that you can use if you know if you choose to follow the standard the the ways that you can program a PLC um, their ladder logic function blocks structured text instruction list and sequential function charts um, I see <clears throat> you know out out working uh, for PLCs, ladder logic seems to be the the most common thing that you'll see, or in the most popular way of programming. And then uh, when you get up into larger control systems, distributed control systems, and stuff like that, you'll see function block programming a lot. Um, these are the two things that I see most often: are the ladder logic and the function blocks. Um, in the next couple of slides, I'm going to show you a little bit what they are, or what they look like. Okay, so this is a ladder logic uh, diagram. Uh, so this is what it looks like to uh, to program a PLC in ladder logic. Um, I'm not going to go real far into depth here, but just the general concept, or these are your outputs or the things that you're trying to make happen. And this is the combination of inputs that trigger that output. So uh, in, this con in this combination, basically what would happen is if, if if uh, start and run are true and stop is false, then it closes a relay called run and starts a, a timer there. So uh, anyway, that's it's not really important that you understand the con or understand how to program ladder logic. I just want you to know if you ever see this or you ever see a PLC and somebody starts talking about ladder logic, you know what they're talking about. Ladder logic is is one of the ways you can program a PLC. So function blocks, um, this is what function block programming looks like. Um, it's, a, it's another graphical uh, way to program. Um, and, and like I said, typically you'll see function blocks used more in distributed control systems. Like at the power plant, the main control system that's controlling the power plant would, call it, it would be called a DCS, a distributed control system. And uh, it would typically be uh, programmed using function block programming. Structured text. Uh, structured text just looks like, uh, you know, looks like probably what you'd expect computer code to look like. So it's a it's a text based, um, whereas ladder logic and function blocks are both um, graphically based. 